good evening everybody and a big welcome to all of you in our today's game changing webinar series for SBL for March 2023 attempt. My name is Hassan Dosani and I hope you guys are doing well. So it is a two day webinar. Today is day one and tomorrow same time 8 p.m. Pakistan time. We will have day two of the webinar and both these webinars are being recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube, I guess, by Tuesday. So in case uh, you miss the webinar for any reason, you can then watch it on the YouTube, right? Okay, let's move on. Our strategy for two days. So what we will be covering in two days time. Lots of things to cover. So we will, I will start with an introduction on SBL. We will discuss exam techniques. We will discuss all the professional skills. We will discuss all the formats. We will discuss all the technical articles recently issued, which are very important for your exam. We will be solving a couple of big questions. And towards the end, I will share a list of important topics for you to focus on. And uh, last but not the least, I will share a study plan for the last three weeks, especially for self-study students, okay? So as you can see, uh, too much things to cover. Regarding previous webinars, so of course it is mandatory to watch this webinar for March, 2023. However, you know, uh, it will be good if you can watch some of the previous webinars so that your preparation can be all rounded. So I would strongly suggest that you must watch September 2021 webinar, okay? After that, you must also watch December 2021 webinar and then March 2022 webinar. So these three extra webinars, they are also available on YouTube. So other than this today's webinar, you must also watch these three additional webinars, especially if you are a self-study student. All right. How to ask questions. So I really, really want you to ask questions because the live webinar, the whole purpose of a live webinar is to make it more interactive and you can ask questions and seek clarifications and clear your doubts and concepts. So how you can ask question, you will have to type your question in the chat box. So you can see a chat box, okay? You just type your question there, but please, please, please make sure that your question should relate to the topic under discussion or should relate to the slide under discussion. If you ask any general question, which I am not discussing at that moment, I will not be able to deviate. So for any general question, I will towards the end of the webinar tonight, I will spare like 10, 15 minutes and answer all general questions. All right. Well, a very quick introduction of myself. Most of you already know me. Uh, so I don't want to go in details, but you know, I'm professionally, I'm working and uh, I am the CFO of uh, uh, insurance company based in Dubai. And uh, I've been teaching for last 20 years. Uh, but most importantly is this one, my WhatsApp number. So please note this WhatsApp number in case you don't have it so that if you want to connect with me, if you want to ask me anything separately, you can WhatsApp me, right? Also, you might know that I also manage a SBL WhatsApp group globally. If you are already a member of the SBL WhatsApp group, then it's okay. But if you are not a member of the SBL WhatsApp group, please 
you can message or this number and you will be provided with the link in fact uh, in fact i have the link somewhere let me copy the link and um, paste it right here so i'm pasting the link on the chat box okay so those of you who are not the member you can use this link to join the global sbl whatsapp group correct okay quick look at the sbl pass rate so these are the attempts on the x-axis and if you look at the previous six attempts so it's basically this is the passing ratio so it was 51 percent and 51 percent then it slightly went down to 50 percent for two more attempts and then in the last two attempts which is september and december it's around 49 percent so i can see a slight decrease in the passing ratio but nothing to worry about uh, because you know sbl's passing rate is definitely one of the highest passing rates amongst all strategic professional level papers okay so nothing to worry there now uh, sbl is very very different and i have talked about this many times in my orientation so i will not spend a lot of time but just for the benefit of new joiners it is a very different kind of paper i would not say difficult but different from all your other acca papers why because a it is one integrated case study some six to eight exhibits will be provided to you there will be a list of requirements and all the requirements pertains to the same case study secondly it is the longest paper so far it is a four hour paper so this makes it a bit challenging because obviously sitting straight for four hours under exam conditions is not easy it requires physical stamina it requires mental stamina it requires emotional stamina so you know uh, so you have to you will have to build up this stamina if you don't have the stamina for four hours you will not be able to perform in the actual exam because you will get tired after three hours right and how will you build up this stamina there is only one way that you do at least at least three proper mocks four hour mocks under exam condition you see i can i can teach you how to swim in a classroom right but the actual swimming you will you will learn when you are in the actual swimming pool got it so how you will build stamina you will have to actually do three mocks four hour mocks at least three mocks and automatically your temperament and your stamina will build up then there are 20 professional skills marks so it's a hundred marks paper out of which 20 marks belongs to professional skills right so can i say that 20 percent of the paper 20 percent of your paper is professional skills so you have you have to really master the professional skills so that you can score good marks in professional skills there is less emphasis on models so those students who are loves to use models please relax SBL is not about models. Yes, there are some basic models which you should be familiar, but there are common sense answers as well. So even if you don't use a model, but you cover all the points correctly, you will get marks. So please do not forcefully use models in your answer. You can you apply your common sense as well. Then there are various formats involved in SBL. There's reports, there is briefing notes, memos, presentation slides, press release, emails, letters, project initiation documents. So you have to be very, very familiar and hands-on with all these formats because they carry professional marks. 
And lastly, but most interestingly, more than 30% of the paper is common sense questions. I repeat, more than 30% of the paper is common sense questions. Now, what is a common sense question? A common sense question is a question which does not belong to any particular chapter or syllabus or model. You just have to think logically based on the information provided in the exhibits. You have to lay down your points. I have experienced that many students, especially the bookish students, you know, bookish students who like to read books and theories and models, they actually struggle very badly with common sense questions because the bookish students, they rely on the theoretical knowledge. And here in these kind of questions, you don't need theoretical knowledge. You have to think logically like a CFO, right? So a lot of practice you should do on these type of questions because you will be caught by surprise, okay? Now, why students fail SBL? That's a million dollar question. I think it's very, very important for us to understand the risks, what mistakes students have, are, have been doing, right? And try to learn from their mistakes so that we do not fall in this uh, pitfall, right? So this is a list which I have compiled based on the various examiner's report. And I have mentioned this in order of sequence. So the most important or frequent or common reason is on the top. And then likewise, it goes down, right? So the first reason as per examiner, why examiner does not pass students? His first issue is, he feels that the answers are not linked with exhibits. He says that often theoretical or general answers are given. And you see, this is the problem with most bookish students. As I said, people, bookish students who like to read the book, the topics. So when you're a bookish student, you tend to deviate from the case study. You forget the practical side and you start applying the theoretical side. So it's absolutely, there is no room for theoretical answers or general answers. You will not get a single mark for it. SBL is all about integrated case study. So your answer has to be from the exhibit in, in the context of the case study, right? So please, you all your answers should be linked with the exhibits and I will show you how once we do some questions uh, after a little bit, you will understand. But that's the first reason why examiner fails a lot of students. Then he also says that, you know, merely copy pasting materials from exhibit without adding own comments is, that's another reason why he fails. You know, because of the CBE platform, it is very easy to copy paste uh, the material from the exhibits in your answer sheet, right? You can easily copy paste. So what students do is they just copy paste the exhibits and move on. They think they have done the answer. No, zero marks. There is no marks for copy pasting. Yes, ideally you should copy paste some important piece of information or relevant information, but then you will have to add your own comments, explaining that point, explaining the impact of that point, what is in your mind, how it relates to the question. So you have to add your own comments. If you don't add your own comments and just rely on copy pasting, zero. Now this one is also important. Overspending time on one particular question, mostly question number one overspending time on one particular question. I call this time trap. 
So deliberately the examiner gives one or two questions in the paper which are time trap question. What is a time trap? That they want to upset your time management. And what happens is that the most students, they fall in this trap and it, just to complete that question, they forget about the allowed time and they significantly overspend the time on that particular question without realizing that they have gone overboard the timing. So the moment you overspend time, if what will happen? If you overspend like 30 minutes, 20 minutes on one question, what do you think will happen in the end? Type guys. Understood. So if you overspend 15, 20 minutes on one particular question, obviously, basically, you are um, hijacking the time. You are hijacking the time of other question. And by the time you will reach towards the end, you will not be able to complete the paper. You might miss out a 10 mark question towards the end. You might attempt 90 marks or 85 marks, depending how much uh, screwed, uh, how much uh, uh, screwed up you did in the paper in time management. So please do not fall in the time management, okay? And uh, because of time management, you will not be able to complete the paper. And if you don't complete the paper, you will not be able to pass. So these are the top four reasons why students fail in the eyes of the examiner. And please, I want all of you to make sure that you do not do these mistakes. Otherwise, you know what will happen, right? These are the top reasons why students fail. And then there are smaller points like uh, um, insufficient number of points according to the marks. So obviously, if it's a 20 mark questions, you have to write more points. If it's an eight mark question, you have to write less points. So number of points depends on the marks. So make sure that you always decide your number of points according to the marks of the question. And I will teach you this under exam techniques. I will cover all this. And then of course, poor technical and professional skills knowledge. Some of the students are not prepared for the exam. They have not uh, gone through the important topics. They have not, they don't know professional skills. So it is, it will clearly reflect in your answer. And then this one, students do not practice and do mocks on the CBE platform. So all your practice, which you will do, all the mocks which you should do, should be on the directly on the CBE platform. It should not be on a Word document. Okay, you must be very very hands on with the stupid CBE platform. It's not very user friendly. That is why I insist that you use the CBE platform so that you don't panic in the exam when you are using the platform. Right, and lastly weak typing and formatting skills like formats, layouts, excessive typo and spelling errors. Now, a lot of students, they ask me, sir, uh, what should be the typing speed? Like 100 words per minute, 200 words per minute. I really don't understand these words per minutes. But what I know is if you are if your speed is average, if your typing speed is average, it's okay. For example, what is average typing speed? So let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, on a scale of 1 to 10, if your typing speed is 6 or 7, you are good enough. Okay. And how will you improve your typing practice? Obviously, the more you will practice, using the CBE platform, by default, 
your typing will improve, right? It's all interconnected. And then students ask me, sir, what about spelling mistakes? Spelling mistakes, not a big problem. Everybody understands, the examiner understands that when we type, there will be spelling typo errors. Even if the examiner types, that bloody guy will also make errors, right? It's So, little bit spelling errors, reasonable level of spelling errors is acceptable and no marks will be deducted. However, if you have a serious problem of spelling errors, if it shows that your English is quite weak and you are making errors in each and every sentence you are typing, then obviously you will lose marks. Then I would say that you also are not fit to be the CFO, right? But reasonable level of grammatical errors, typing errors, it's acceptable, it's understood. I'm just going through the comments. Yeah, all looks good. All right. So any questions on this slide or the previous slide? I think this slide is more important. Any questions before I move? What sort of grammatical mistakes are acceptable? I mean, you you've done F8 and all those theoretical papers, right? It's exactly same. Little bit of grammar is okay here and there. I'm sure you guys have done, done some theoretical papers, right? Okay, I will share these notes after the class. No worries. I will share the notes after the class. Sure, no problem. Okay, let's move on. Now, this is a slide specifically for those students who are giving SBL for the second time or the third time or God forbid, fourth, fifth, sixth time for reset students, okay? So I know that in today's batch, there will be some first time uh, sitters and some retake exam uh, students, right? So just... Uh, and just to give you an idea, those students who obtain less than 45 marks, I mean, you can judge yourself. If you obtain less than 45, then basically it shows weak technical knowledge or theoretical knowledge, some conceptual issues. Probably you are giving general answers. You're trying to use models unnecessarily, but basically less than 45 means that you your concepts or your knowledge or your theoretical side is not up to the mark. Those students who obtained between 45 and 49 marks, this shows that you have good technical knowledge, but maybe you made some, you know, you did not practice sufficient, maybe, you know, weak drafting or weak linking or weak professional marks, or bad time management, maybe you were not able to complete the paper. So it shows that you know the knowledge, but you messed up in the exam techniques, okay? So you can judge on your own what error you made. Right. Now this slide is very important. You know, uh, this slide, many of my previous students, many of my previous students, the, the top scorers, the prize, the place winner students, students who scored 75, 80, 83 marks, even in my um, December attempt, two students scored 83 marks in SBL and 83 is absolutely crazy marks for SBL, I, I have to admit. So I asked them that, how did you got so high marks? So all my top performing students use this slide. 
And this is basically when you are doing SBL paper, you have you should think like a CFO. You should think like a CFO. Do not feel that you are a student. Do not think that you are a student while doing SBL paper. Just imagine yourself that you are a business leader, you are a CFO, you sit on the board of directors and automatically your confidence will go up, your way of thinking will become more practical. Okay, and imagine, and when you are drafting your answer, Imagine that your answer you are writing or addressing to the board of directors. Do not imagine that you are giving the paper for the examiner, but imagine that you are a CFO and you are educating the board. You see, the board is non-financial. The board has a CEO, the board has a marketing director, production director, HR director, IT director, ops director, I don't know. They are not finance experts. Who is the financial expert? The CFO, you guys. So uh, the role of a CFO is basically to guide the board, to educate the board regarding the business aspects, the financial aspects. So please, when you are practicing, drafting, solving, reading a SBL case study, don't think that you are a small, weak, tiny student. Feel big, feel that you are a CFO of that company, feel that you are a director of finance of that company, and you will feel automatically that, that, that your way of thinking and your confidence will go up. Okay, this slide really helps psychologically in tackling SBL. Those students who are successful in applying this psychological strategy, they score 70s and 80s. All right. It was just a small gift from me uh, so that, you know, you might wish to use it. He, uh, T is asking, it's hard to think like a CFO. The, who's this? Please mute. All of you, please mute. Please do not un be unmuted. Okay. Make sure that you are muted. T is asking, it's hard to think like a CFO if you haven't been in the workspace or you uh, do financial account. Absolutely correct, T. Obviously, you, you guys have not been CFO, so it's hard to think like a CFO, but it's not impossible. Or you think like you own the business. If you were running your own business, T, if you were running your own business, will you think like a financial accountant? Be honest. No, right? If it is your own business, will you think like a financial accountant? T, answer me. Okay. If you are with your girlfriend or boyfriend, will you think like a financial accountant at that time? No, you see, everybody can do it. As long as you consciously apply your mind, obviously it will come with practice, but you have to consciously think like that and it's not difficult. It's just common sense, logical things, right? All right. Are you guys ready for now SBL question solving? With all this, information you think you are ready should we start no way no way you are not ready how can you solve a question until you know all the formats so let's go quickly quickly 
go through the format. So the most commonly asked uh, format is called report. Most frequently, or one of the most frequently is prepare a report, draft a report. So it's a very simple format. On, the, on here, you will give a big heading report. There will be a to, there will be a from, there will be a subject and the date. This is a standard format, okay? So the to, it will be mentioned in the requirement to whom the report is to be addressed or who is asking you to prepare a report. So that person's name or designation goes there. From is basically your role. So your role is mentioned normally in the first exhibit, okay? So your role is mentioned in the first exhibit. However, there are two types of roles. Uh, either you are an employee of the company, like you are like you are the finance manager or uh, whatever, but you are an employee of the company. That's one possibility. The second possibility is that you are a external person, like a consultant or management consultant or an outsider. So depending on your role, your drafting changes slightly. So if you are an employee, you are an insider. So you will talk about us, our company. And if you are an outsider, like an external consultant, then you will talk in third person sense, like you guys, you guys are doing wrong. Understood? It all depends on your role. Subject, you can, you know, just uh, pick up the keywords from the requirement. Date, just write today. Just in your paper, don't mention any dates. Just write today, just like this, and khalas. All right. After that, there is an introduction para, and you can say this report, and then you can copy paste from the question, the requirement, so it becomes the introduction, and then your body of your answer. Here, from here, the actual answer starts. So this portion is the format bit, which is covered under professional skills. And this is the body of your answer. And then in the end, when you finish, there has to be a closure, like best regards or sincerely or whatever you like and your role. Is this format clear? Any questions on the format? Very standard format. Please memorize it because you have to be really fast in your exam with these formats. You cannot waste seven, eight minutes just making the format. You have to make a report format within 60 seconds, maximum one, one and a half minute, right? Report, like the heading, to, from, subject, date, introduction, and then closure. Now, this one is very important. Do we need to give conclusions in a report? No, Laiba. Yes. Uh, do we need to give conclusion? No. Please stay away. Please avoid conclusions. Okay. So conclusions or recommendations not required unless specifically asked in the question. So obviously if the question says, and uh, you know, analyze blah, 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 and conclude, then you have to give a heading conclusion towards the end and summarize your thoughts. But if the question is silent, so do not offer conclusion voluntarily, stay away from conclusions. Any questions on report format, most important format, any questions on report format? Kival, forget about these philosophical questions, okay. Under exam situation, just stick to this, okay.
Now the second, sometimes the examiner says draft a section of a report. So he doesn't want a full report. He just wants you to draft one portion or one section of a report. So it's, it is the most easiest format. You just give a heading section of a report, give a heading introduction, that's like normal introduction, and say this section of the report, copy page from the requirement, and then start your answer from here. No to, no from, no subject, no dates, no closure, just the main heading section of a report, the starting introduction and khalas, the, the real technical answer follows. Now, briefing paper. This is also as equally important as a report. This is also frequently asked. It is. It has several names. Sometimes the examiner says prepare a briefing paper. Sometimes the examiner says prepare a briefing note. Sometimes the examiner says prepare a memo. All these three are same. Okay, so do not get confused. And I have exactly used the report format. Just follow the report format, which we did earlier. Just change this heading. Don't write report, but write briefing paper or whatever is applicable. Then the usual to, from, subject, date, introduction, and closure. Because I don't want you guys to struggle in your exam wasting time on formats. You have 60 seconds to do all these things. Can you imagine doing all the format within 60 seconds? It's really challenging. So keep the format simple and practice so hard that we can do it very quickly. Again, in the briefing paper or briefing note memo, no conclusion is required unless if the question specifically asks you to conclude. All right. Then the third possible format is called email. This has been asked, this has low frequency, uh, maybe two or three times in all, four times in the last three years. But you never know, you have to be familiar. So again, email, you give the heading email, standard format to, from, subject, date, and then, Mention the introduction. Just don't give the subheading of introduction, but just give an opening sentence that this email analyzes, blah, 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 and then the closure. Okay. So I've tried to make all the formats consistent or similar so that you don't juggle between various formats and waste precious time. Any questions on email? Yes, of course, the formats have marks. So the formats comes under communication skills, professional skills. No Moses, today means just type the word today, T-O-D-A-Y. Do not put any numerical dates. Just write today. Clear? Now, a presentation slide, this is quite frequent. Huh? The presentation slide is quite frequent. So, in your CBE platform, there is a separate template for presentation slide. So, whenever there is a question on presentation slide, you are expected to use the presentation slide template which is separately available on your CBE platform, correct? So when you will click on the presentation slide template on your CBE platform, it will have two sections. The first section will be like a box like this and underneath the box, there will be support a section for supporting notes. 
Sometimes it is called accompanying notes, sometimes supporting notes. So doesn't matter. There are two sections of the form uh, on the template. One is the main slide, which is the box. And then right below the slide is a section for supporting notes. What do you understand by supporting notes? Any idea? Can you guess? What is the purpose of supporting notes? What does it do? Very good, Abin. Very good. Abin says explanation of the slides. Excellent, excellent. Explanation of the slide. So here, this one is the main slide. So of course, you cannot write stories and long paragraphs on a slide. The whole purpose of a presentation slide is to show bullets, right? If you have attended a presentation anywhere in your life, you will see that there is a slide on the screen and it's just showing bullets. There is no stories on the slides. So same here, the main body of the uh, presentation will just have bullets. And the explanation of these bullets you are expected to mention here. Okay, so if there are three bullets here, I would expect to see three small paragraphs, one paragraph uh, each for each bullet. So for example, for high turnover, I expect one paragraph explaining what do you mean by high turnover, linking with the exhibits, sharing your thoughts. And the second bullet is low staff morale. So I expect another paragraph discussing this point. And then this one is another paragraph discussing the third point. So don't worry, the presentation template is already provided on the CBE platform. All you need to do is click on that and start typing. Any questions on presentation slides? Mohammad Minal, up to you. How many lines there for, for explanation? Two lines, maximum three lines. Okay. The fourth format is letter. Again, this has been tested, I think, maximum two times or three times in the last three or four years. So again, you will give the head, uh, the heading letter. On the right side, you will write your role, your country or your designation. On the left side, you will write the date and the address to whom you are writing this letter. So this is basically the from, and this is the basically the to. Okay, this is to, this is from. And then you will give a subject. You will do a salutation like respected uh, chairman, respected. CEO, whoever has asked you, whoever it is addressed to, you give an opening sentence that this letter will talks about or analyzes or whatever is the requirement, and then a closure. And here is the actual body of your answer. So top right is basically the from, who, your role, who you are. Your role will be here, two is here, okay? Then there is a press, re press, press release or website release. Again, this has been tested less frequently, like maximum two or three times in last three to four years. So if, it's a, if you have been asked to prepare a press release, then you will get the heading press release or if it's a website release you give the heading website release then next line you will write the subject in the next line you will write the name of the chairman or the ceo whoever is uh, uh, planning to release this press release 
the name of the company and the date and the date instead of writing the actual date you will write what you will write today or you can say uh, date today okay And then an opening sentence that through this press release, we would like to share our views regarding Baba Baba and then the body of the answer and then a closure. So I think that press release format is quite different from the others we looked so far like reports and briefing papers. So please, you need to memorize this format. Okay. Then there is a small format called business case. The examiner may ask you to prepare a business case. Although this has not been tested so far at all, but whenever you are required to prepare a business case, there should be three broad headings. Obviously the main heading is business case. And first you will talk about the current situation, then the proposed option, and then the benefits, pros and cons of the proposed option. Very simple business case format. Last format is project initiation document. So again, it's a very specific document, a very specific format under the topic of project management. So if the question is, if the question relates to project management, and you have been asked to prepare a project initiation document. So these are basically the contents of a project initiation document. So you will need to start with the scope and objective of the project. Then the PID includes cost benefit analysis of the project. It should talk about sponsor, talk about project manager. You have to include project team, some other stakeholders, duration of the project, key risks of the project, constraints, and then project governance and monitoring. So these are the basic contents of a project initiation document. You will need to go through the project management chapter or topic to understand this, but this is the high level format of a project initiation document. Yes, Nabil, I think I have solved one question on PID in one of my previous webinars. So you might find something there. Lastly, lastly, in every attempt, in every attempt, you get this question. Every attempt, the examiner will ask you to identify weakness and give recommendation. Or if this question is not there, then definitely this question will be there. Identify the risks and give recommendations. Sometimes both of them are there but at least one of them is there in each and every attempt. So whenever there is a question which asks you to identify the weakness and then give recommendation, I would always prefer a tabular format. On one side, you mention the weakness here and then you can give the recommendation here. It looks neat and clean and very structured and you, if you follow this, you will not miss out on anything. Yes, you can use a paragraph style, but you know, there's a danger that you might miss out. It requires a lot of subheadings. Forget about it. Any questions which says identify weakness and give recommendations, please try and remember and use a tabular format simple like that. Even if the question says identify risks and give recommendation, again, the same format, just instead of weakness, you will write the risks and recommendation or mitigating factors. 
okay so try to use a tabular format for such kind of questions yes mudassir there there is separate marks for weakness and separate marks for recommendations obviously right guys any questions on the format we have done with the format um the most important formats are report format briefing note or briefing paper or memo and then uh, presentation slides and lastly the weakness recommendation table yes i will share got it these are the four format which covers 90% of your paper report briefing paper presentation slides and this weakness recommendation table format. Yes, Huma, you correct. Business case is uh, will be tested under project management area. All right. Now, are you guys ready to solve a SBL question? Yes. Now you know all the formats, right? No, Baba. No, Baba. You are not ready. Because all questions in carry technical marks plus professional skills marks, remember? So do you know professional skills? Not yet. So how can you solve a question? You will lose marks. So let's uh, go through professional skills. Right, so professional skills, let me give a quick background first. So professional skills marks, I call them cash marks. What do I call them? Cash marks, why do I call them cash marks? because they are readily available. So first of all, I know for sure ke this, that this will come. Can anybody remind me how much is professional skills marks? Let's see, 20 out of 100. So I know that pakka pakka professional skills will come in the papers. This is one of only one topic, which is 100% guaranteed, right? Rest, we don't know which topic can be tested, but professional skills, 20 marks guaranteed, there will be, it will be in the paper. So we can prepare very strongly for it, right? Secondly, it's easy. It's not complicated. It is very well structured and you will see after a few minutes. So something which is guaranteed, which will be tested and it is easy. Then for me, these are low hanging fruits. I should, we should try and grab these marks as much as possible, no? So that is why for me, it is cash marks. I will try to perform really best at least in professional skills, maybe I will try to score 13 marks out of 20, 14, even up to 15 marks out of 20. It will give you a great kickstart. So do not underestimate or ignore professional in skills. In fact, it should be the other way around. You must focus extra on professional skills to grab these cash marks. Now, the good news is that ACCA has really structured its professional skills. It is not haphazard. So they have actually identified five professional skills which you need to demonstrate. How many professional skills? There are five professional skills which you need to demonstrate. Analysis. So I will, uh, please guys, mute what's happening. So it is basically evaluation skill, the first one. 
then analysis skill is the second one communication skill is the third one commercial acumen skill is the fourth one and lastly the fifth one is skepticism skill so you must know that professional skills is divided into five separate skills correct and listen very carefully please i want all of your, your attention for one minute for each question in your paper the examiner will specifically tell you which particular skill you need to demonstrate in this question you got it so for each question it will be clearly mentioned which skill you need to demonstrate so it's not like you have to demonstrate all the five skills simultaneously in all the questions no 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 each question will have its own professional skill which will be mentioned in that question and you just have to focus on that particular skills so how more easy can it get so you exactly know which skill to apply got it so let's talk about the first one evaluation skill very easy evaluation skill is very easy just make sure that in your answer you mention both pros and cons so if the skill professional skill says demonstrate evaluation skill when we have to evaluate something we look at all angles we look at the advantages we look at the disadvantages the pros and the cons so whenever the question says demonstrate evaluation skill just make sure that you have covered both pros and cons khala <laughs> Is this? Why do you guys only press unmute? I fail to understand. Any question on evaluation skills? Just pros and cons. No, Jai. I just mentioned in the start. Do not get into models. Now I have a question on evaluation skills. so when we have to so evaluation skill is that we have to cover or mention both pros and cons so my question is do they have to be equal like five pros and five cons very good they don't have to be equal it all depends on the exhibit it all depends on the availability of the information right if the case study has mentioned if the exhibit has mentioned four advantages and one disadvantage then we will follow that so there is no hard and fast that it should be equal all you need to make sure is you have covered both it could be five four pros and one con then also you will score evaluation it could be the other way around it could be one pro and five cons then also you will get right so there is no but make sure you cover both so someone is asking what if there is no con yes that is possible what if there is no con in that scenario obviously you will cover the pros but there is no con in the exhibit so try to think or come up with a con at least one at least one or maximum one got it common sense yes now there is sometimes the examiner says critically evaluate he uses the word critically evaluate so what is the meaning of critically 
Critical means to criticize. Criticize means to identify weaknesses, to find out faults. So when the question says critically evaluate, then obviously we have to focus more on, we have to focus more on negative points. We have to focus more on the cons, the disadvantages, right? Got it? It's all common sense. It's not rocket science. Very good. The second skill is called analysis skills. Again, it's very simple. Analysis skills is basically you are trying to analyze a problem. You are trying to investigate the reasons or the root cause why this is happening. Why? The word why. Investigate the reasons. So, for example, supposing the revenue of my company, the revenue or sales of my company declined by 20%. It, 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 fall, it fell by 20% this year. Okay. What will the board ask? you as a CFO. If the revenue falls by 20% this year, what question the board will ask you? Come on, guys. The board will be shocked. They will say, what has gone wrong? Why the revenue has fallen? Explain to me. Why? The reasons. That's analysis skills. So then the CFO will investigate, will analyze in detail and will come up with the reasons or explanations why the hell the revenue went down. Got it? So analysis skills is basically identifying the reason for variances, the, the root causes. So you dig, so everything will be available in the exhibit. All the reasons and why uh, sales has gone down it it could be economic recession it could be competition uh, it could be any reason right so it will be provided in the exhibit all you as long as you identify the reason analysis skill is done got it so you focus on identifying the reasons or the root causes the third one is communication skill. As the name says that, you know, communication skills, basically it's the format, how you present your information. So all those formats, which we did earlier, report, briefing notes, slides, they, all, they are all covered under communication skills that you are able to present your report professionally. Also, other than the format, the way you are drafting your tone, you have to keep the reader in your mind to whom you are writing the report. Is he a financial person? Is he a non-financial person? So your language, your tone should be simple so that the reader can understand your point. So again, nothing much needs to be done here. Just make sure that the formats are proper and you know that whom you are addressing the report so that your drafting, your tone is aligned or simple so that that person can understand your point. So it's just about presenting nicely and drafting. Yes, Priyanka, correct. So, so far, evaluation skill is Nothing needs to be done. Just make sure that you talk about both pros and cons. Analysis skills, nothing extra needs to be done. You just make sure that you identify the root causes, the reasons of the variances and any problems. Communication skill, nothing extra to be done. Just make sure that the format is there 
and uh, your tone, your drafting is simple and according to the reader to whom the report is being addressed to. Similarly, commercial acumen skill. Commercial acumen simply means that you understand business. Do you think, do you think that it is important for a CFO to be able to understand the whole business? Yes or no? Obviously, it's very important that the CFO understands the entire business. Why? Because, you know, uh, when we make budgets, CFO makes a budget, right? The budget starts with revenue and then cost of sale. So I have to understand the revenue, the revenue drivers, the products, competition, how the revenue numbers fit into my PNL. Then cost of sales. So I have to understand my cost of sales, what are the components, how they affect. So obviously a CFO must understand the entire business. Agreed? So that's commercial acumen. So I am the CFO of an insurance company. So obviously I understand finance, right? I'm the CFO. So it's, it's, it's understood that I understand the finance portion. But do you think I have knowledge of the entire business? I, can I understand what others are talking about? Absolutely, yes. I know my business inside out. Otherwise, I, how can I challenge them? How can I debate with them if I don't know what insurance is about? Right, so this is commercial acumen that a finance person should know a little bit about all things. For example, do you, do you have commercial acumen? What do you think, right? Yes or no? First, assess yourself in your own view. So Basit says yes, very interesting. Do you think that you have commercial ac acumen? Priyanka says no. Okay. Abin says no. So, okay. Abin and Priyanka. Okay. I want you to answer the next question. Abin and Priyanka. So, Abin and Priyanka my revenue has fallen by 20%. Can you give me three reasons why sales has gone down? What in your view, what could be the possible three reasons why sales has gone down? Abin and Priyanka, what do you think? What, 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 why sales have then gone down? Give me one reason in your view. Cost up? Are you crazy? Demand has fallen. Priyanka, very good. Priyanka is saying that maybe the demand has fallen. Yeah. Then she's saying increased competition. Absolutely, yes. This online, Amazon, Chinese products. So competition. Someone is saying disposable income or economy has gone down. Absolutely, yes. Someone is saying bad marketing. Absolutely correct. Someone is saying customer habits have changed. Taste has changed. Very good. Someone is saying bad strategies. Yes. Bad marketing strategies. Someone is saying lack of technology. Absolutely correct. Maybe we are not up to the mark. We are not using online. Someone is saying disruptive technology. In very nice. Someone is saying substitute products. Absolutely correct. All these answers are commercial acumen. Political instability. Yes. Obsolence of the product. Yes. This is commercial acumen. All of you knows 
this, right? This little bit, all of you know. This is all common sense. This is commercial acumen. That's it. So basically commercial acumen, you just talk about revenues and because you talk about customers, you talk about competition, you talk about external factors like political situation, economy, social, ecological, technological. You can talk about, you know, internal factors like human resources and branding and all these risk management, all these are commercial acumen. That's it. So again, nothing extra needs to be done for commercial acumen. You just answer the question from common sense. Everything will be provided in that exhibit. Just don't sound like a financial accountant. Don't talk about debits and credits and cost. Yes, cost is important, but should not be your first point. Cost should be second or third point. Got it? So commercial acumen, basically understanding of the overall business and external factors. Use words like customers, competition, market share, strengths, weakness, Opportunities, threats, risks, technology, marketing, HR, strategic planning, goals. All these are business buzzwords. You understand buzzwords? Very common words. The entire business depends on them. So as long as you use these words, these aspects in your answer and everything will be there in the exhibits. You just have to pick it up and explain it in your own words. And you will automatically get commercial acumen marks. Nothing extra needs to be done. Right? So, so far we have done four skills. Evaluation skill, analysis skill, communication skill, commercial acumen skill. And in my opinion, nothing extra needs to be done. Thus follow the basics. Right? Now, the last one is skepticism skill. Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of skepticism? Being skeptical. Questioning mind. Being alert. To doubt someone. So what is the meaning of questioning mind? When you say questioning mind, what is the meaning of questioning mind? What if? Challenging. Yeah. Why do we question? Don't trust blindly. Very nice. Questioning mind is why do we need to ask questions? So that, you know, we can scrutinize, we can challenge, we can make sure that the other is talking sense, they have done their work properly. Is there any married female on the group? Is there any married female in the group? I know Crystal. <laughs> this one is uh, Minura. Okay, I'll start with Minura. Minura, type yes, Minura. You're married? I know. How many years? Minura, how many years? Four year, very good. So Minura, do you trust your husband? I hope yes. Good. Now, suddenly you start seeing a different pattern. Suddenly your husband is now coming late from his work. On weekends, he, you know, is going to work more frequently. Will that raise certain doubt in your head? Obviously, right? So, obviously, you don't mistrust him, but an unusual pattern will raise a doubt. That's skepticism mind. 
that you know you cannot trust anyone blindly you have to be alert so now when this this thing continues like he is now coming late very frequently he is going to work on weekends very frequently at one point in time will you ask him what the hell is going on what do you think what will you ask him why you are coming late this is not usual previously it was not happening like this are you sure everything is okay and then you will keep your eyes and ears open right of some hanky panky good this is a skepticism mind right thank you for participating uh, candidly i hope and pray this doesn't happen with you thank you minora so this is skepticism mind so now put this example on me i'm the cfo obviously i don't do all the work in finance right i don't have the time to do everything and monitor everything i rely on my finance managers and the people who report to me so when they come up and give me a report or tell me a story or tell me a reason should i believe them blindly like an idiot or should i counter question them just to make sure that they have done their work properly and they know what they are saying and they have not made any mistakes correct so skepticism skill is a very important skill the more senior you get you have to rely on your skepticism skill to double check to make sure that whoever is providing you information that's correct and accurate and reliable exactly so now in your exam how can you demonstrate skepticism skill there are two ways one you can ask couple of questions or you can challenge them that i disagree with your uh, assessment or your views or oh, and of course when you disagree you will have to give reasons you can challenge someone that i disagree with your views or i think that your views are not appropriate or correct or you can counter question you can ask some questions to prove that that person is right or wrong so in my views and in your exam if you want to demonstrate skepticism skills you have to use words like i disagree or it's incorrect or it's inappropriate or you can say you know you can ask a couple of questions and you are done you will automatically get skepticism so my view in your exam you have to deliberately adopt a slight negative tone when you are drafting for skepticism skills a questioning tone a challenging tone a negative tone but of course not crossing the limits you have to be respectfully challenging okay professionally all right so you got skepticism so now these are the five skills which you have to master and i will repeat every question will specifically tell you which particular skill you need to demonstrate so in that particular question you just focus on that particular skill one last thing on professional skills that the examiner will also provide you some more guidance on what exactly you need to do to score professional skills marks and i will show you once we go through the paper any questions on professional skills any questions on professional skills yes no right 
so we've covered all the formats today we've covered all the professional skills today exam techniques i will cover tomorrow because if i cover exam techniques today it will be too much for you you know you need to absorb and digest all this thing so tomorrow i will start with exam techniques absolutely important that you attend tomorrow's session tomorrow is sunday i deliberately kept this on sunday so that majority of you can attend exam techniques are do or die they make the difference between pass and fail especially if you score between in, in mid 40s or late 40s in your previous attempts so i will cover this tomorrow then again uh Technical articles, if there is any new technical article, it is definitely tested in your paper. So I will also cover the relevant technical articles tomorrow. No, Labiba, please stay away. No, Tigre, that's not possible. So now, now we are ready for some practice questions and drafting, but I think you guys need a small break. You need a break. It's already one and a half hours. I need a break, guys. <laughs> I'm the one who's talking for last one and a half hour. You guys are just nodding your heads and watching your mobiles while listening to me right uh so let's take a 20 minute break some of you can grab your dinner some of you can say your praise so 20 minutes is okay so i will so it's 9 25 here so 9 45 i will see you guys huh 9.45, I will see you guys, Pakistan time, it's a 20 minute break, 9.25 to 9.45 p.m. Pakistan time, I will see you sharp at 9.45, okay guys, see you in a bit. So our today's topic which I have chosen for you is from the corporate <laughs> sorry guys someone was unmuted so it is from the corporate governance section and we will talk about neds which is non-executive directors and the board committees and the reason i have picked this topic is that uh, there is one particular area in this topic which is tested quite frequently. So, okay, let me start with an overview. So, non executive directors. So, you see, there is a board of directors. You all know that, right? That the company is governed by a full board of directors the board of director is headed by a person called chairman okay uh, the chairman is the leader of the entire board of directors then there is the ceo he is also a director then there will be a finance director there will be an it director hr director uh, marketing director, depending on the company. So all these directors are on the board. So the CEO is a paid employee of the company. Although he's a director, he is a salary plus benefits plus bonus. He's a paid employee. And so is the finance director is also paid. The marketing director is also paid. But then there are additional directors on the board who are called non-executive directors. The non-executive directors do not get any salary or any bonus or any benefits. 
So can I say that we can split the board into two broad groups? Executive directors who are getting salaries and bonuses and perks and non-executive directors who are not an employee of the company. They do not get salaries, bonuses and perks. So normally executive director includes the CEO and all the finance director, IT director, all the functional directors. And the non-executive group includes the chairman. So generally the chairman is a non-executive director. He does not draw any salary or bonuses or perks, generally. And then there are some other more people who are there on the board as NEDs. So NEDs are part-time outside directors who are independent. That is, they are not employee of the company. Okay, got it. Do they work for free? Not really. They get a fixed fee for being NEDs and are not entitled to any bonus or share options as it will create conflict of interest and threaten their independence. So yes, they do get a fee, which is a fixed amount, and it is normally a less amount than a salary. They get like per quarter or per board meeting, whatever. And generally the law of the land gives a range or you know, advises a range of, of amounts which we can give to any of these so that it's not excessive, so that there is no conflict of interest and it does not impair their independence. <clears throat> now, what do these non-executive directors do? Why do we need these outsiders people? What do you think? Why do we need these outsiders on the board because of independence, number one, because uh, all the other directors, the executive directors, they are getting salary and bonuses. So they have a vested interest in the company, right? They have a personal interest in the company. But these non-executive directors, they bring in, in independence to the board. They add to the shareholders' confidence because it is actually the shareholders who appoint them. And then they have wider experience. They are senior people, experienced people. So they can share external expertise. They can scrutinize the performance of executive directors. They can challenge the CEO and the executive directors, right? So they all... So they basically work on closely on behalf of the shareholders. Got it? You understand the idea of having NEDs on the board so that they can control the EDs and make sure there is no conflict of interest, independence is maintained, and to provide confidence to the shareholders. Whistleblowing, you know, challenge the CEO. Very good. What are the advantages? So we just discussed, they bring independence, they add confidence to the shareholders, they have external experience and wider perspective, they can scrutinize and challenge the performance of CEO and executive directors, employees can discuss confidential or sensitive matters with NED like whistleblowing, in case they suspect any fraud, they can go and talk to the non-executive, and then also company can comply with regulatory or listing requirements. Got it? So definitely, you know, if you know that according to the corporate government's requirements, it is for listed companies, it's mandatory to have sufficient NEDs on the board because of these reasons. However, can you think of any disadvantages? or limitations yeah there are certain issues like they may lack independence so you know so there is a small risk that they might not be fully um, 
hundred percent independent. They might be connected or they might have a personal interest. There's a small risk there. And then, you know, they have a smaller remuneration as compared to executive directors. So basically they might not be really wanting to work or they might be demotivated or they may not give sufficient time to the business. That's the main challenge because they are voluntary directors, right? They're not drawing salaries and benefits. So sometimes they don't actually do their job properly. They don't give time. They don't give attention. They don't participate as much as they should or as much as it is expected from them. So these are certain downsides or limitations. But obviously the advantages are much more uh, higher and you know the disadvantages are less so it is mandatory to have NEDs on the board. Okay. Now the board so in this NEDs you must be familiar with the advantages and disadvantages of NEDs. Very important. Yes, someone wanted to ask question, Basit. And also, I think there might be a possibility of conflict, right? A difference of opinion or a conflict with the executive directors. I think that is also possible. Okay. Now, board committees. So you have to understand the concept of board committees very carefully. So there is a full board. Yeah, we know that. There is a full board which consists of executive directors as well as non-executive directors. Now, Within the board, the directors, they make some small subcommittees. It is called board committees. Okay. So normally you would find four board committees. There could be more, but at least as per law, there could be four board committees. One is called nomination committee. One is called remuneration committee. One is called audit committee and one is called risk committee. Okay. So as the nomination committee, committee, as the name says, what does this committee works on? This committee works on, you know, the hiring and firing of directors, the training of directors, all those things. Remuneration committee, as the name says, this subcommittee, what do they specialize in? They basically decide the salaries and the bonuses and perks of the executive directors. Audit committee, what do you think they do? It's very important. huh? Audit committee is more relevant to us. Audit committee, they basically, they review the financial statements and internal controls. They liaise with external auditors. They supervise internal audit and they manage whistleblowing arrangements. You have to remember this because sometimes there's a, there was a question on audit committee. And lastly, the risk committee, as, as the name says, the risk committee will focus more on risk management related matters, like implementing a risk management process, embedding risk management in the culture, identifying key risks and recommend controls, ensure controls are working effectively. So they are more focused on risk management. Audit committee is more focused on financial statements, external audit, internal audit, whistleblowing. The remuneration committee is more focused on deciding the pay scales, the salaries, the bonuses, the benefits of executive directors, and nomination committee is more focused on the size of the board, hiring the right people as directors, their training and all those things. Is this clear? Now, nomination committee. So 
all these four committees listen carefully all these four committees are basically within the main board there are no outsiders in the committee so for example if i have a board if my total size of the board is 15 directors executive plus non executive my total board is 15 people so i will nominate three or four directors in nomination committee i will nominate two or three people in rem committee i will identify three people and tell them that you are uh, this so all these committees are within the board and as always have the directors in it there will be no outsiders got it they are all subcommittees you understand subcommittees they are all within created from within the board now the interesting thing is that remuneration committee so the chairman the chairman of the committee i'm not talking about the chairman of the full board each committee has its own committee chairman right so the chairman of each committee has to be a NED. so all these committees are headed by an NED. This committee, nomination committee, majority members have to be NED. So, example, if there are three members of this nomination committee, two has to be ex non-executive and one can be executive. So, majority members should be NEDs and the chairman has to be NED. Remuneration committee, all members have to be NED because it's a conflict of interest. You are deciding the salaries of the CEO and other directors, so they cannot be on this committee, right? The audit committee, 100% NEDs. There will be no executive director on this as per law. And risk committee, it says majority NEDs. Is this clear? It is simple. So if you, so did you notice did you notice that when we have these board committees, majority of them is NEDs, board committees. So the chairman of all these committees have to be NEDs and two committees have, should have 100% NEDs. The other two committees, majority NEDs. So there's a lot of reliance on NEDs as far as committees are concerned. Got it? Now, I will come to the most important topic here, why I did it, why I selected this topic. Can you guys tell me, why do we need these subcommittees? When the full board is there, then why the hell we need committees? What are the advantages of having these committees? The whole board is there. So what's the point in forming these smaller committees? There must be some advantages, right, of having the committees. Segregation of duty, more focused, yes, more specialized. Board can focus on core matters. Very good. Full board cannot focus on everything. Good point, Ayaz. Prevent conflict of interest, experts, focus, specialization, dividing responsibility. They can give more time. I'm just going through your comments. Increase shareholder confidence. Nice. Ensure independence and integrity. Good one. Shareholder confidence. Good control involvements of NEDs, independent opinion, oh, very good answers. So now, this is the most important thing and you can see I've mentioned here, very important topic. What are the advantages or importance of having board committees? 
So all of you were there. So it's more specialized. What do you mean by more specialized? Can anybody explain to me? What, what do you mean by more specialized? Expert in the field. Very good. Expertise, expertise. So for example, let's talk about risk committee. So risk committee would require people from risk management background and experience. Does it make sense? Yeah, so risk committee should consist of those people or those NEDs who have experience of risk management. How about audit committee? Audit committee should consist of NEDs having finance and audit experience, right? And what about nomination and REM committee? I think nomination committee and remuneration committee should have people from HR experience. No, mama, HR experience. You are, I, I, you are recruiting people, you are identifying the skill set, you're deciding the pay skills and salary. So these are all HR functions, right? So the first advantage is more specialized because if, if I am making a risk committee, I will make sure that I will only nominate those people, those NEDs who have background or experience in risk committee. So when you put specialized people in the right committee, it brings more expertise. The second advantage is more focused. What do, you, what do you understand by more focus? That if there's a committee, how it will create more focus on that activity? Think. Yes, they have assigned duties. Yes. If you see, each committee has its own terms of reference. Terms of reference means mandate or activity which needs to be done. So obviously when there is a specific committee for risk management, they will be focusing specifically on the activities relating to risk management. And that's more focused. Like audit committee will focus more on financials and audits. So each committee has its own mandate and TOR. So obviously when the specific committee is there, they will be more focusing towards the specific tasks and activities relating to that committee. And then how about this one? More time can be spent by committees. More time can be spent by committees. Yes, these committees, they meet more frequently. So the full board, normally a full board, they meet once a quarter, four times a year, right? But then these committees can separately meet more often as much as they want to meet. So it's difficult to arrange the full board frequently, right? There are too many people. But when there's a small committee of three people or five people, it's easier to give more time, meet more frequently. So the committees are smaller, so they can give more time, more focused, more specialized. So you need to remember these first three advantages are critical. Most crucial advantage of having committee, they will be more specialized. They should have expertise and experience in that field. They'll be more focused because, you know, each committee has its own dedicated tasks. So they can focus on delivering on those tasks and they can spend more time because they can meet more frequently as much as they want. Got it? And then there are additional advantages like the full board can focus on 
more strategic and business matters. I know, I, I, you know, I want the board to focus more on business growth, business strategies, business performance, expansions, right? I don't want the full board to spend hours and hours on audit matters, risk matters. Yes, these are important. But let the committee handle these things and this will free up the board's time so that they can focus more on strategic matters, business matters, growth initiatives. Right? Although I would like to clarify that even if there are committees like risk committee and audit committee, it doesn't mean the board is not responsible for it. All the subcommittees, they report to the board. You see, so board is ultimately responsible for everything. But then the board has confidence that if there is a specific committee, they, will, they must have reviewed things in detail and then they rely on the recommendations of the committee. So it kind of frees up their time and they can spend more time talking about business matters rather than these smaller issues. And then there are this higher involvement of NEDs. We saw that all the committees, either 100% NED members or majority NED members. So it's higher involvement. So it's more independence, more external, wider perspective. And then ultimately, it increases shareholders' confidence because if there's higher involvement of NEDs, shareholder will be more confident. So these are the six very important advantages of having board committees. Any questions? This is the crux of everything. Any questions? Okay, now I have a question. Let's see how nicely you understood. So these advantages, these advantages pertains to which committee? There are four committees, right? These advantages pertains to which committee? They're applicable to all the committees, Baba. Be it nomination committee, be it remuneration committee or audit committee or risk committee. These advantages are applicable to all the committees. They are generic. Generic means that they are applicable to everybody. So now, if there is a extra committee called dance committee you know dance committee so my company has an extra committee called dance committee so do you think what will be the advantages of having a dance committee What will be the advantages of having a dance committee? Obviously, same. They will be more specialized. So directors who are good in dancing will be part of that committee. They will be more focused. So they will be focusing on all dance-related activities. They will be able to spend more time. They can meet more frequently and it frees up the board, right? So these advantages are generic. No matter whatever board committee is there, you can apply these to any committee. Yes, Duben. Okay, so I want to ask um, for the risk, risk committee, why do we have just majority NEDs and not all 100% um, NEDs? Good, good point. So Duben is asking that for risk committee, why it is majority NEDs and not 100% NEDs? The reason is that, you know, a risk management is a technical field and it requires a deep knowledge about the company and its operations. Then only you can do risk management. 
So sometimes the NEDs might not have deep knowledge of the business operations. They might have strategic knowledge, but not deep knowledge. So that is why for risk committee, we, they would like to have one or two executive directors who have a deeper understanding of the company's processes so that they can you know, do a good meaningful risk management uh, process, okay? Yes, Ayaz, very good. Ayaz is saying because executive directors have a greater knowledge of the business operations. Yes. Yes, T. T, I can't hear you. Your mic is unmuted, but it does, doesn't seem to work. Okay. All right. So now let's do a juicy question on this topic. Please, can you open up your CBE platform and we will be doing SBL March, June 2022 paper. It is called Yex Marine and we will be doing question number one. So on your CBE platform, you have to go to past exam library and then select March, June, 2022. We will be reading exhibit one and three. So how do you open CBE platform? You just log into your MyACC account. And then from there, you know, you can go to this option resources and here log into the practice platform. So let me do that for me. So I've already logged into my practice platform. So I will scroll down to strategic business leader, official resources, past exam library, and I will select March, June, 2022. It's already selected. And then I will scroll down and here it will be there somewhere, March, June, 2022 region. All right, guys. Um... Have you opened your CB platform and this paper? I'm waiting. If you have, if you are ready, please type yes. If you are ready with your CB platform, please type yes. This is March, June, 2022 paper. One more minute. Those of you who are opening CB for the first time, uh, yes, Akbar, you want to speak while we are waiting for others to open? Yes, sir. Uh, sound. Yes, sir. sir, I have two specific questions. Uh, my first question is, can one uh, one NED belong to a, a one specific committee and also be the member of other committee as well? Yes, very much possible that, you know, one NED is already a member of one committee can he be a member of another committee yes it is possible my second question is that can the cm of the board can also be the cm of any committee cm is what if the chairman of the entire board uh, suppose mr x is the chairman of the no, board i understand can he so you're saying that the chairman of the full board, can he be the chairman of any committee? Yes. Okay, sir. They are all NEDs, right? So theoretically, they are all independent. Okay, sir. Good Thank question. You. Anyone Thank else you. who have a question? Okay. All right, so 
Manoj is asking why CEO is not NED. So CEO cannot be NED because CEO takes salary, right? Do you know any CEO who works free? CEO takes salary, bonuses, and all those things. So how can he be NED? He's an employee. Very good. Akshi, I don't understand your question. It's pretty simple. These committees are made from within the board. Like people from the board are part of this committee. Okay. There are no outsiders. Can chairman of one committee be a chairman of another committee? Yes, there is no hard and fast rule, but normally we avoid it. No, Manoj, the CEO. Sir, no, I'm asking as he is not NED, how? No, the CEO cannot be a chairman of any committee. Got it? The CEO cannot be a chairman of any committee because all committee chairmen have to be NEDs, right? Okay. No, Girish. Does committee member rotate? Yes. Normally one year, two year, or it depends on the company. Follow Felix, follow Le Confoco. All right, guys. So here, those of you who are seeing the CB platform for the first time, I will quickly give an overview of the platform. So on the left side, these are various exhibits. So in this case study, you have been provided with seven exhibits. On the lower side, there are tasks. Task means questions or requirement. In this case study, there are five questions or requirements and their respective marks are shown against them. And the last is the response option in which you will type your answer. So you've got a word processor, you have got a spreadsheet and you have got slides. So for SBL paper, you will only use word processor, okay? So it's a standard word processor. You can type, it's all the, you know, bold center options are there. Spreadsheet, we don't require an SBL. So there is no need of using spreadsheet in SBL. So please ignore it. And then yes, slides, if there's any question on the slides, then you will require the slide template. And if you recall what I said on slide, that all slides will have two components. One is the slide itself, the box, and underneath the slide, you will see the speaker notes. All this is typeable. And then slide two, followed by the speaker notes of slide two. Okay, so you will type your answer here. Okay. So let's open task number one. 17 marks. So every requirement has three components. I repeat, all requirements or tasks have three components. The background, this is the background of the requirement. It's very important to read the background. Then in the bold, you will see the technical requirement, which is worth 14 marks in this question. After the technical requirement, you will specifically see a separate paragraph for professional skills marks, which is worth three marks for this question. So total marks for this question is 17 marks. Got it? So the background, the technical requirement and the professional requirement. These are the three components. So let's read the background quickly. Yex Marine's chief executive is drafting plans to establish a number of board subcommittees. To fulfill the business needs of Yex Marine, 
as well as meeting corporate governance best practice and requirements. Okay, straightforward. The CEO wants to create a number of subcommittees. The first committee he wishes to establish is a strategy committee. And he has set out his proposal for it. He wants your views on the benefits of and problems with his proposal. He wants your consideration. He wants your consideration of the problems to include discussions of any omissions from the proposal. So he's already made a proposal to establish a strategy committee and he wants your views on the benefits any potential issues or problems of if, or if he has in, in, omitted anything or missed out anything from the proposal that's the background write a letter you see letter replying to the chief executive of ex marine which assesses his proposal to establish a strategy committee you are supposed to assess his proposal talk about the benefits the problems any omissions in the proposal professional skills marks are available for demonstrating analysis skills in considering the benefits of and problems with the proposal very important paragraph so we know that it's analysis skills okay but I mentioned that the examiner will always give you some additional guidance for professional skills. He will not just say demonstrate analysis skills full stop. No, he will further elaborate and provide you some guidance on what exactly he is expecting from you. So he says in considering the benefits and problems with the proposal. That's pretty straightforward that if you read the proposal and if you are able to identify the benefits and the problems or the shortcomings from the proposal, automatically you will get analysis skills. So basically you need to investigate the proposal and try to identify the benefits and the shortcomings. So as long as you are able to identify the, the benefits and the shortcomings from the proposal, automatically you will get analysis skills. Is that clear? So it's very, very important to read this additional guidance so that we can follow it properly and focus on this. What's happening, guys? Uh, why are you chatting amongst yourself? Is there any problem? The webinar is for three hours. I don't understand why you guys ask these stupid questions. You want to leave, you can leave right now. I'm doing this webinars for you guys, okay? All right. So it's clear. Professional marks for analysis skills in considering the benefits. So nothing really needs to be done here. Just read the proposal, identify the benefits and problems and halas. Yes, Omar, I agree. Right. So now we know the requirement, the background, the technical requirement and professional marks. Okay. So what is a strategy committee? I've never heard of it. So I know about remuneration committee, audit committee, norm committee, and or risk committee. What is a strategy committee? Can you think of strategy committee? What it will be doing? Abdul Moiz, I'll come to it. Strategy committee will be focusing more on what? What will be the role of a strategy committee? Focus on strategic matters, 
strategic planning, strategic direction for the business, strategic long-term strategies, taking major dis business decisions, right? Common sense. <sighs> Guys, keep it simple, okay? A strategy committee will be focusing on strate strategies and strategic matters and decisions. Khalas. Hmm? Ginesh, you, Girish, again, you are applying models. Please stop going wild. Strategy committee will be focusing more on strategies and strategic matters, decision making. That's it. Simple, huh? Good. Manoj is asking, but sir, this is the overall responsibility of the entire board. Absolutely correct. Actually, it is one of the core duties of the board to do strategic. That's what they want to spend their time on, right? Absolutely correct. But this is here, the CEO wants a specific committee. And then the committee will come up with proposals and the board will then discuss, you see. As I said, having committees does not mean the board is relieved of their duties. He wants the committee to focus more on this, probably come up with options, and then the board can debate on it. And final decisions will always be taken by the full board. Committee's job is to do the groundwork, the homework, go into more details, okay? Good question. Yeah, the committee will assist the board. Yeah, absolutely correct. Now, can you first please read the overview? You should know what this company is about, what they do. So you should know the background of the company. And in this, in case you are able to identify any strategic related information, then we can use it in our answer as well. But just read the overview to familiarize, familiarize yourself with this organization. Time starts now. Please read on your own. I will read on my own. All right. So just an overview. Yex Marine is a yacht manufacturer based on New Land. Main product is cruise manufacturing and sale of cruising yachts. They also carry out maintenance work and repairs. They have two main competitors, Janrom and Calabi. You know, some overall uh, structure like Tony is there. Now the chief executive, the board has five executive directors. And including the CEO with 20% holding and the board also has three non-executive directors, including the chairman. Interesting information because we are talking about strategic committee or board committee. I think this information is uh, relevant. Five executive directors and three non-executive. Uh, they also plan to seek listing on the new land stock exchange. They're planning to seek listing. So listing regulations requires them to have some subcommittees, something about locations. And uh, over the next five years, he wishes Yex Marine GP margin to increase from this to this and operating profit margin to increase from this to this. Can anybody tell me that the CEO wants to achieve this growth, this target? He wants to improve the pro the gross profit margin from A to B and the net profit margin from C to D. How can we improve our margins? Any idea? Well, growth, right? Reduce cost is the theoretical answer. You just can't reduce cost, right? By just, so basically the more you will grow, Are Baba, cost cutting, reduce cost, you think it's possible without increasing revenue? You might reduce your quality, right? If you do all these things. 
accounting things. So if I want to improve my profitability, the I need to focus more on growth. Always remember this word, growth. No, Priyanka, please don't talk like accountant. Growth. Please, all of you type the word growth. Type right now, growth. Halas. It's all about growth. Okay, you want to grow your profit, you have to grow the business. Profit cannot grow without growing the business, right? You want to grow your profits, grow the business. Kemar, don't oversmart. Forget about organic and these fancy words. Growth. Khalas. Yes, Manoj. If I want to grow my profits, I have to grow my business. How can we grow business? I mean, don't get into these complications. Better management controls. Seriously, you grow business by better controls? My God. Revenue. Expansion. Right? When we talk about growth, the first growth is top line growth, revenue growth. So do we need, so how can we grow revenue just, can we grow revenue by doing nothing? Do you think we need some strat, long-term strategies? We need to put some long-term strategies in order to grow? Simple, no? That if we want to grow the business and the profits, We have to then bring some strategies. Otherwise, without strategies, we will be not be able to grow. Like product strategies, marketing strategies, cost efficiency strategies, understanding customer needs. I don't know. There could be so many strategies which we need to implement. Again, Keval, you are using a model. Please don't go overboard with your theoretical knowledge. That's where you guys stuck. So, do you think a strategy committee will be able to contribute or help in making the right long-term strategies to achieve the growth target? Salas, itni simple si baat hai. This is as simple as this. And if, if the CEO has some growth targets, then the strategy committee is really important. Because the you will we will need some strategies in order to grow, and strategy committee will be able to contribute and help in growing, right? Simple. That's it. So I think the important information from this exhibit is this one: the composition of the board. Also, they are planning to enlist next year, and then the CEO has some he wishes to improve the margins, okay? Margins can be improved through growth, through achieving economies of scale, economies of scope, diversifying, right. So now I want you to open up the word processor. I want you to prepare the format first. So what is the format required? It says letter. Who, 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 who the requirement says uh, write a letter replying to the chief executive, assessing his proposal to establish a separate Establish a strategy committee. Okay, so we will say letter. It should be addressed to whom? Should be addressed to whom? Uh, Tony, do you know the name of the CEO? Uh, yeah, we had the name somewhere. Yeah? Tony Barsham. Okay.
ओके क्लियर टोनी बर्शम और यू कैन पुट द डेट हियर एज वेल डेट लेटर डेट टोनी बर्शम इज द सीईओ और यक्ष मरीन न्यूलैंड subject what do you think the subject should be suggest me a subject wait i will come to from suggest suggest me a no what is the most important keyword here in the uh, question most important word here strategic committee yeah or you can say proposal to establish a strategic committee okay then you will say dear tony the from bit i will cover in the closure the last one okay and then we will say what are the requirement we have to do uh benefits let me read the question what do we reply uh you use on benefits and problems okay so i will give two broad headings benefits problems and then i will say your best regards what is our role who are we trainart consultants okay done do you understand the skeleton or the format i gave the and also sorry i need to mention the task number task number 1 is letter date is today tony bersham ceo yx marine new land subject proposal to establish a strategy committee or you can just write strategy committee whatever you want uh dear tony is the start we will give some introduction then benefits problems best regards let me bold this so that you know the format stands out uh very clearly okay i just bold the main headings so that how do you want to start dear tony this letter and then i will copy from the requirement assesses assesses his proposal no your proposal to establish a strategic committee full stop okay now i'll look at some comments you are up to you i mentioned from towards the end yeah shika i think on the letter forget about the top side it's time consuming right put it towards the end 
Give me an opening sentence, please. I'm writing this letter to assess your proposal to establish a strategy committee in the X Marine. Very good doing. So I'll copy this Doin's one, or you can just stick with the simple one that this letter. This letter assesses your proposal to establish a strategy committee. Okay. Now we are ready with the format and the skeleton. Now we will read the exhibit and we will identify some points and bring it to our answer sheet. Can you go through the list of exhibits and try to identify which exhibit is relevant here? Can you guess from the name? Which exhibit do you think is a relevant exhibit? Exhibit number three. Oh, yes, exhibit three, strategy committee proposal. So this is the proposal which has been prepared by the CEO, right? Yeah, so I want you to now read this exhibit in detail. First, understand what the CEO is proposing, what is in his mind, why he's making this committee, all those things. And then we will try and identify some benefits of having this committee, some problems and some shortcomings in the proposal. Please read the entire exhibit in detail. Time starts now. Okay, well done, guys. So this is a proposal which was written by the CEO. He is mentioning his thoughts, his reasons, why he thinks there should be a strategy committee, who will be the members, what role will the committee play, what, what will be their tasks, and all these thoughts are there. Now, you're supposed to talk about the benefits of having this committee. Yes, Labiba. Now, you're supposed to identify the benefits of having a separate strategy committee and also talk about some problems which you can think from reading his thing. So first of all, did you understand this exhibit? So he's saying that we shall be facing a number of major strategic decisions over the next few years. We therefore need to be sure that we are spending enough time on strategy. We have to lead the strategy so that we can address the challenges we shall be facing. Does it make sense to you? I mean, I think it makes sense to me that, you know, he is realizing that there will be major strategic challenges. They want to grow. They want to spend more time on strategic. That is why he is planning to create a separate committee. Very nice. So now, what benefits can you think here? What is the first benefit of having a separate committee? Recall your lecture right now. Whenever we have first benefit, I just want you to mention the first benefit. No, more specialized. So if there is a specific particular committee for strategy, matters, then it will be more specialized, right? Very good. Second benefit, it will be more focused. So whatever the tasks which uh, the CEO has mentioned, they will be focusing on those tasks, right? It is their job to focus on the tasks and the mandate and the description was right. How about more time? Third benefit, because this is a separate, smaller subcommittee, 
they will be able to give more time because the board does not have that much time to spend on these matters, right? Okay, so let's start. More specialized, more focused, more time. So what do we write? Now we have to explain what do we mean by more specialized? We have to explain what we mean by more specialized. So think, can, how can we elaborate on it? How can we link with the exhibit? What expertise you think should be there? What expertise should be required? They should be experienced in strategy and strategic management and all. You see these tasks. Where are the tasks? So you see they should be, you know, the experience in providing leadership direction. They should know you know, long-term strategic planning, they should be able to identify strategic threats. So these are, these require certain expertise. Experience in, let me pick up a few things, long-term strategic planning. I can experience in long-term strategic planning, comma, what else can I pick? Identifying strategy. I'm just copy pasting some little bit to add weight to my answer. Evaluating strategic options in detail. This is good. Evaluating strategic options in detail, etc. If you nominate members having the relevant expertise and experience in strategic management, then having this committee will uh, Enough. This is worth two marks. Do you understand what I did? I just said more specialization. It will bring more specialization. How? It will say that the task requires certain expertise such as da, 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 da. If you nominate members having relevant expertise and experience in strategic management, then having this, having a separate committee will definitely lead to more specialization. Simple, plain thoughts, but logical thoughts linked with the exhibits, explaining or educating the CEO how more specialization can be achieved. There is no complication no model, just plain, simple English with logic and some facts and figures from the exhibits. Okay, so this paragraph is worth two marks. The second one is more focused. How can we explain that? Having separate
committees helps in focusing more on the tasks for example the tasks you have identified is it the task what is he calling it uh, terms of reference okay as you have already identified the terms of reference for this committee the the members will then be focused on doing on do achieving those tasks tell us or maybe as they exactly know what needs to be done if they know what is the job they are supposed to do if there's a clear terms of reference obviously they will then be able to focus on those tasks and will be able to achieve achieve the outcomes got it third one is more time now i want you to draft more time try to link with the exhibit if you can please draft on your cb platform please draft this let's see i give you 2 minutes now you understand more time please draft more time right try to write couple of lines ideally three lines how you think you know it will more time can be a benefit to them aaron please type on your cbe platform do not type on the chat box manoj wait please now copy paste your drafted answer on the time on the chat box i want to go through the top 10 comments i will review the top 10 priyanka is saying good priyanka nice drafting resham not not good enough you need to add a little bit more good ayas good akshi okay lakshmi on the borderline no abdul try to elaborate a bit more very good humayu Usama, elaborate a bit more. Good Arti. Good Nina. Good Ankur. Try to link with the exhibit. Those of you who are not able to write more, give couple of examples from the exhibit. good shika important thing is linking with the exhibit so there is no direct information on time but you can mention that it is a time consuming activity <clears throat> i am just quickly going through the comments i am not taking names tigra is that it that's not enough tigra
Eddie Doyle, it's a bit short. Try to link with the exhibit. Give some example how the No, Manoj, very bad. Such a general answer. How have you linked it with the scenario, Manoj? Priyanka, elaborate a bit more. Good. All right. I will let me try. I think it was mentioned here, right? That it is a... Oh, I see the word. Oh, we therefore need to be sure that we are spending enough time. Oh, you see the word time here? Why don't we use this? I found it. as you will be facing a number of major strategic decisions uh, over the next few years it is important that you that the ex marine should spend enough time considering blah 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 now it's linked with the scenario having a separate strategy committee will make sure that enough time is spent on this activity as the committee can meet more frequently and spend more time as compared to the full board. <laughs> Understood? Try to start your sentence from anything from the scenario. Because the first reason why students fail SBL as per examiner is weak linking or not linking. Just writing a generic answer because the committee is smaller, it can meet frequently. That's too small. You might not get two marks. But when you start by saying that the CEO himself is saying that we should spend enough time. And then I said, yes, because it's a smaller committee, they can meet more often and then they can give more time as compared to the board. Is this clear, the approach? Focus more on the technique, the approach of linking. For those of you whose it is your first class, you're looking at this for the first time, you just focus and understand the technique. You might not get it right the first time, but my existing paid batch students, I think you now know this technique. Very good, Madeline. Nice. And what about uh, more like uh, freeze up the board? Uh, higher involvement of NEDs, um, higher shareholder confidence. I think these are not applicable here because it's not a listed company. The directors are the shareholders. So NEDs. The... So now let's identify some problems and then we will see what to do. Are you able to identify any problem? Very good. So let's look at the let's look at the membership. Who will be the members of this committee?
Right now, I propose that the membership should be like CEO, the marketing director, technology director, production director. That's fine. But they, they all look like, to me like executive directors. Production director is executive, technology director. So do, I don't see any non-executive director. Yes, Humayun. I don't see any non-executive director. Do they have non-executive directors? Do they have any NED on the board? How much? Yes, they have three NEDs. One of them is the chairman. So do you think there should be one or two NEDs on this committee? Do you think there should be a couple of NEDs? Why? Um, Why? Please type. Why? No, Priyanka, don't give me this bullshit of equal. Why do you think there should be NEDs? No, no, forget about independence. This is not an audit committee or a risk committee or the, you know, those kind of committees. Why do we need NEDs? What value do they bring? How will they add value or advantage? They have wider experience. They have external experience that they might be able to share the their you know ideas and out of box thinking. So those of you who are saying they you know it has to be majority NEDs or uh, independence, you are theoretically right, but. This is not a committee required by law. The law requires four committees, nomination committee, remuneration committee, audit committee, risk committee. So for these four, it is mandatory to have majority NEDs, mandatory to have independence. But this strategy committee is not a, a corporate governance requirement. It is, it is the CEO's wish. So then don't talk about independence and majority because this is not a regulatory requirement to have. I can have a dance committee. There, there is no requirement of NEDs or non -NEDs. But I think I think NEDs should be there mainly because they are senior people, they have wider external experience when we are talking about strategies why don't we use them why don't we use their input independent view yeah why not got it somebody has raised hand yes kelvin unmute uh good, uh, good evening uh i want to find out um in terms of presentation uh of the letter or in the answer uh, in terms of the pros and the cons of the proposal. Would it be appropriate to maybe, let's say, include uh, a table format? Uh, include what? A table format in the answer. No, 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 no. Table format in pros and cons is not required. Table format is only for weakness and recommendations. Thank you. Welcome. Doin, you are saying that independence is useful because ED might be making decisions based on their self-interest. Correct. But who are the shareholders here? Who are the shareholders here? The five EDs. It's mentioned that each director has a 20% shareholding. So it's not a listed company, remember? There are no external shareholders. The directors are the owners. So there is no conflict of interest in this scenario. Got it? Yes, if it was a listed company, then yes, independence is important. 
But here the directors are the owners. It's kind of a private company right now. They are planning to get listed after one year. All right, so let's make this point. No, no NEDs. Please draft. Try to link with the scenario. Try to mention executive directors, how many they have. Maybe I would like to have, I would personally like the chairman to be part of this because chairman is the overall most senior person and he's a non-executive. So you can talk about and then what benefit or advantage they can bring draft now. Draft on your CBE platform. Write two, three lines nicely and then paste it on the chat box. I will go through the first 10 comments. Take your time. Now you know the technique. Link with the scenario and then say what benefit can, why are you suggesting any of these? What advantage can they bring? Got it? No, Abin, very bad. Weak linking. Why can't why cannot you why why can't you mention the three that you all you have three executive directors? Just add that. Good camera. But try to mention, please mention how many non-NEDs they have. You will get extra marks. When you know some statistics, please utilize uh, that in your answer. Very good, Akshi. You are picking up very nicely now. Abin, please mention that you have three EDs. Why are you shying away from mentioning information from the exhibit? Good Zaveria, it's a bit short, but okay. Good Muhammad Usama. Very bad Tanveer. Very bad linking, you are not using the information from the exhibits. Good Sundas, it's a bit short, but okay. Good Umar. <sighs> no Varsha. No Varsha. Wrong. Nina, it's too long. It's good, but it's time consuming, right? Okay. Let me draft. You see how I used the statistics. You have to demonstrate to the examiner that you have read the exhibits. And this, ex this information is not from this exhibit three, it's from exhibit one. So the examiner will get impressed that you are utilizing information from variety of exhibits. That's where you get marks. So I'm saying that according to the membership you have proposed, you have nominated four EDs out of five. Is that correct? However, I noticed that you also have three NEDs on the board, including the chairman. I think you should also include some NEDs on the committee as they will be able to bring wider perspective and share their experience and will be able to contribute to strategic planning for EX money, plain and simple English. But you see how beautifully I tried to use this information. This is linking with the scenarios. I actually used two exhibits merged it here to get extra marks. 
please learn this technique of using information from the scenario and then build your argument on top of that. Okay, so no NEDs. Now there is one more problem in this proposal. So there is one more problem in this membership. There's one more problem here. This, no, this, this here. So who is there on the committee? The, the chief executive is there. The marketing director is there whenever he's appointed, okay? Technology guy is there, production guy is there. What about you guys? What about you? Don't you think the CFO should be there? Or the finance director? You think the finance director needs to be there in this committee? When you, if you say yes, give me a reason. If you say no, give me a reason because there is nothing in SBL without reason. Why do you think the CFO should be there? No Priyanka, sales director, marketing director, same thing. Okay, talk about more important stuff. Why do you think the CFO should be there? What value can a finance director add to the committee? Budget and planning, that's a very accounting word, my friend. You need a finance director in the committee because of budget. Come on, man. Focus on growth. The CFOs will focus on growth. The others can't. Yes, uh, Vignesh, you're absolutely correct. Good Eddie Doin. Good Namjoon. Good Lakshmi. No Nidu. It's just not about costs. Okay, now I will explain the background. I, in my company, I sit in the strategic committee. I'm part of those. So whenever we make strategies, okay, let's say we, our strategy is to launch a new product. So all strategy has some financials attached to it. When we will launch a new product, then of course we, for each strategy, we have to do a financial assessment, a financial evaluation of the strategy, right? Don't you think? If we make a strategy, is it important to also do a financial assessment of that strategy, whether if we are making money or not? What's the point in making a strategy if we are losing money? So a strategy, a good strategy is a one which will not only give revenue, but give profits to the company, right? We have to grow the profits. So all strategy, now this is a learning for you that whenever we talk about strategies, a strategy is incomplete until a financial analysis or a financial assessment has been done. How do we know the strategy is good or bad until we look at the financials? How much more revenue will we get? What will be the incremental cost of implementing this? And in the end, are we making some money or not? I will never approve a strategy for loss making, right? I will never approve a loss making strategy. So who, so who will do the financial assessment? And all the strategies, they require investment as well, right? 
strategies require some planning, some investment, some initial cost, and then the future revenues will come in. So who will do all these things? All the existing members are non-finance people. So it's very, very important that in strategy assessments, the financial component, the financial aspects needs to be clearly understood. Got it? Don't use words like budgets and planning. It's much above budgets. It's about assessing the financial impact of the strategy, both revenues and cost. Now, guys, please draft. Draft on your CBE platform and paste it here. Take your time, please try to link with the scenario, try to explain the benefit. What, Nabil? It is understood that the CFO understands the business. Okay. It is always understood that the CFO understands the business. Otherwise, he's not a CFO. Very good, Usama. I like it. Okay, Nabil. Please drop. No, Abdul Moiz. Bad start. First, start with the statement of fact. First, you say that your committee does not include anyone from financial background. How the hell are you linking with the scenario? Please start with the statement of fact and then elaborate on it. Okay, Abdul? And Abdul, you are saying as the CEO aims to achieve, that's wrong. You're actually writing this letter to the CEO. You will say as you are achieving, aiming to achieve growth. You will lose uh, professional marks here. Please keep the reader or the addressee in mind when you're drafting. I'm waiting. Don't use the word CFO. I think finance director would be more appropriate because all the others are directors, right? But it's okay. It's a small thing. Good, Amabel. Annabel, sorry. No, Sundas. The start is good, but end is bad. Please, you have mentioned the benefits of having a finance guy. What value will he bring? Okay, Sukhvinder. Okay, Varsha. Good Bhavesh. Good Ayaz. Good Namjoon. Good Ankur. Good Abin. Good Samir. Good Sana. Okay. 
Now I think you are on the right track. Let me draft. Hello. The proposed membership has directors with non-financial background. There is no one in the committee with a financial background. It would be appropriate or it would be important to include the finance director in the committee so that he can assess the financial uh, impacts of the proposed strategies. Now, this paragraph, I do not propose to define how frequently the committee should meet as it will be obviously meet more frequently when decisions are required. Is this a good strategy not to define the minimum frequency? I think there should be some minimum frequency should be defined why? So, what's wrong if the frequency is not defined? What's wrong? Or what's the benefit of defining the frequency? Because you'll have, you'll have to convince the CEO, right? So, what is wrong if the frequency is not there? Or what is the benefit of having frequency? Think. <laughs> no, Priyanka. Yes, Nam June, very good. There's a risk that they might not meet as frequently as required. People may not be available uh, every time. Good point. It can delay the issues. Do we need some quick, right? Wastage of time. No. No one could. So it's very simple, right? When the committees are there, the agenda is there, Baba, Madeline, what are you saying? The agenda is there, the terms of reference is there, but it is always nice to also define the frequency of the meetings because it will bring more, I would say, discipline. Uh, everybody will know in the committee when they are supposed to meet, they will make sure that they are available at that time. There's clarity. It is more structured. If you just leave it, okay, meet whenever you want, it will not happen, right? So when I give you assignment, I also mention a deadline, right? It's very important for any project management, for any task. It's important to give deadlines or, you know, I have to be clear that the next class is on Sunday at this time so that we all know that at this time we should be available. We have to do our assignments before that. So it's common sense that, you know, it's the frequency of the board should be very clear. They might meet every month. They might meet every week, whatever. But it has to be clearly defined so that people are aware there is clarity, it is structured, it is disciplined so that they don't miss the deadlines. Okay.
Nice. So guys, I think we have already overrun our time substantially. Okay. So do you have any questions on this scenario which we did? Okay, I will show you. Do you have any questions? So the main, what is the main learning in, what did you mainly learn from the drafting? The main learning in my view is the technique of drafting, how you link with the scenario. You should always start with a statement of fact. A statement of fact is a sentence from the exhibit that you know right now this is this right now the members are non-financial right now only four executive so start with the exhibit statement of fact and then build your argument on that this is how you will link in my view this was a little bit theoretical question but more it was a common sense question where you have to think logically you cannot go theoretical here like this frequency or the finance director is not there or the NED is not there. This is, this is common sense thinking. And this is what SBL is all about. Applying your thoughts on the scenario and trying to find out within the scenario what things are missing. We need a lot of common sense here, smart thinking, and then Try to link, start your answer with the exhibit, link with the scenario, and then explain the benefit. Explain the benefit to the, you have to convince the CEO, right? You're a consultant. You have to tell him this is the benefit. This is the problems. Why this is a problem? What? So you have to explain to him. That is two marks each point. That is where you guys need a lot of practice. But please, the main takeaway is the technique. Understand the technique more. Case studies will change, but the techniques will never change. Techniques will remain same no matter what kind of case study is there. Understood? Right. If someone has more questions. Ah, wait, 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 wait. Just one more thing. Let me share my screen. So we are done with the scenario. I will share, I will show the answer again, but I want one more thing here. So guys, the my revision practice classes are starting from 11th Feb, which is at the Saturday, next Saturday. And uh, those of you who are already enrolled with me, you are already automatically included in the revision classes. But those of you who, are, who have not enrolled in any of my existing paid batch, if you feel that this level of drafting and discussion was helpful to you, then you can join my revision classes. We will be doing five full case studies. We'll be doing three mock exams under exam conditions. And I will be checking one mock script and giving you feedback. And there will be a grand revision two days before the paper. Okay, the investment is $100. And for Pakistani students, it's like 14,700 rupees. And this is the timetable for the revision batch or revision class starting from next Saturday. So next Saturday is 11th or 10th? 11th, yeah. This is the timetable, okay? So you see that every day we will be having a live class. So after two case studies, we will have a break, then two case studies, then a break. And uh, so please look at the timetable. In my paid groups, I will also share this timetable, okay? So if you're interested in joining this revision batch, if you are not enrolled with me, please message on this number and they will provide you more details. 
So I will share the timetable on the paid groups. Okay, so now guys, I will see you tomorrow. Let me share the letter again. I will see you guys tomorrow with another question practice and exam techniques, more importantly, 8 p.m. Pakistan time. Okay, guys. So you can log off now. And if anybody has a, has a question, you can ask me now. Sir, can you please share the formats of the uh, report and all the things in the WhatsApp group once again? I will share the entire today's presentation in the WhatsApp group. In the Thank paid so group, much. right? In the paid group. Thank you, sir. I am part of the paid group. Okay, no, I'll share in the global groups as well. And paid groups as well. No, no, no Thank problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Lakshmi, the, all the formats, there is professional marks. Just uh, Akshi, uh, if you want to enroll, message my coordinator, okay? No, Rijwan, the solution is not there. Yes, Annabelle, I think it's a bit late if, you, if it's your first attempt. No, the grand revision is not for self-study students because it is a very different kind of a grand revision. We will be revising all the past papers. Price is $100. We have achieved full 17 marks. No. That's impossible to achieve full 17 marks. Akshi, I have seven cats. AED is also $100. So like 367 dirhams. I rescue cats and then I give them for adoption. Sir, will oh. you please share the answer also in group? Answer of? Answer of this question. In where? Task one, in pet group. Oh, yeah, I will, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, this guy, who was this? Umar, no, it's actually two marks per point. <laughs> Good, Akshi. I will try. All right, guys. So let me sign off now and I will share the information on the group. See you guys tomorrow, 8 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Take care. Bye bye.